Hi guys, Jay here from BornToProduce.com and welcome to another brand new course. In this course, I'm going to be teaching you all about MIDI in Cubase for beginners. So let's get on with it. So first of all, what is MIDI? Well, MIDI, or Musical Instrument Digital Interface, is the standard protocol that transmits data between devices. So what does that mean? That means basically you might have a MIDI keyboard, for example, like my one here, Alesis Q49. It has no internal sounds at all. It's literally a controller. So if I was to press the keys, I'm not going to get any sound out of it. But it sends that data to like, for example, a virtual instrument, otherwise known as a VST or a VSTI. And within the door, which in this case is Cubase, we get that MIDI to transmit to the virtual instrument and that tells the virtual instrument to play a sound. So for example, I'm pressing my keys down now and nothing's happening, but if I quickly add an instrument track, and just to keep this simple, we're gonna use the standard Retrolog. And now my MIDI keyboard is connected to Retrolog. I'll just show you that in the inputs and outputs section in the inspector on the left. Retrolog is loaded up here. That is the output and the input is all MIDI inputs, which includes my Q49, which is here, which I can change it to if I want to, but all MIDI inputs does the same. So that's the input. Retrolog, the virtual synth, is the output. And now when I press my keys, which you can see down here on the virtual keyboard, but I am actually pressing them on my physical keyboard, you can see that it actually triggers a note. So as I said, it transmits data from one MIDI device to another. But what kind of data is it? Well, there's lots of different types of data it can transmit, but the main ones are pitch, velocity, which is another name for how hard you press the key. So in other words, how loud that particular note is gonna be. The note length, so how long I actually hold the key down for. Is it a short note? Is it a long note, etc. And you've got things like pitch bend and aftertouch. Aftertouch is slightly more advanced. It's some keyboards have it, some don't. If you hold down the note and then push a little bit harder, it can do other things as well. But I wanna try and keep these lessons quite simple. And so in layman's terms, the MIDI keyboard is saying to the virtual instrument, play this note for this length at this volume. And that is basically it in a nutshell. But if you remember one thing about this lesson, then remember this, MIDI is data, it's not audio. So MIDI devices transmit data and not audio. And therefore you need a data cable, which in most cases these days is a USB cable. Now there are MIDI cables available, which we used to use back in the day. They're called MIDI five pin DIN cables, and they look like this. And my sound interface, which is the Steinberg UR22 Mark II, does have five pin DIN inputs and outputs. But most keyboards these days come with a USB connection. So I've simply got my MIDI keyboard plugged into my computer directly via a USB cable. Now, if you did want to plug in an external keyboard that has its own sounds or a drum machine or something where you want the audio to come out of that device into your user interface, as opposed to data, then you would need audio cables such as these. And you can plug them in here. But we're not gonna go on too much about that because this course is about MIDI as opposed to audio. So very, very quickly, I'm just going to draw in a MIDI segment. I'm gonna hold down Alt to get my pen tool or draw tool, but you can also come up here and get it here. Or as you can see on the little icon, you can press number eight on your numerical numbers at the top of your keyboard, press eight. Do not press the numbers on the right side of your keyboard, the number pad, because they do different things, but the numbers on the top of your keyboard, all of these tools have shortcuts and you can see them there. Glue is four, split tool is three, etc. So I'm just going to quickly draw in a box over four bars, and I just zoomed in there by getting the four arrow cursor and dragging down or dragging up with my mouse. There's many ways to zoom. We'll go into some other ones later on. And now we need to double click to go into this empty event. But first of all, we need to go back to the normal tool, the standard object selection tool, so you can either select it up here, or you can just right click and let go, and it does it for you. 
So let's double click and we're now into the edit window. Now I have my edit window coming up as a large separate window. If yours comes up in the lower zone, which will be in here, that's absolutely fine. Let's make that a bit bigger. And I'll just show you where that preference is actually. It's, you go to edit preferences or on a Mac, it's under Cubase, the Cubase menu. And if you click on editors, then double click opens editor in a window. Uh, yours will probably be on this, double click opens editor in lower zone. It's up to you which one you want. It's just that the one in the lower zone can be a little bit small sometimes. So I'm just gonna go back to the start to measure one and I'm just gonna simply draw a MIDI note in. So the shortcut is hold down Alt, get your pen tool, and there we go. So I've drawn it on F, and although you can't see the F on that note, if you just zoom in vertically on the right-hand side here, you can see it there. So let's just play what we've got. I've drawn this in manually. I could have recorded this in with my MIDI keyboard. We'll be doing that in other lessons. But basically, this MIDI information here, and that's all it is, information, it's not audio. It's saying note on here at measure one, and at the next beat in the bar, so these are bars, one, two, three, and then you've got the beats within the bars, one, two, three, four. That's because we're on a time signature of 4-4. Four, four. So there's four beats to a bar. It's a note on here, measure one, beat one, and note off at measure one, beat two, as you can see. We can extend this by hovering over the right-hand side. So let's make it a whole bar. It's not gonna be very musical, but I'm just demonstrating this for you. There we go, and if we put the metronome on as well, You'll be able to hear a bit more of a beat. So it's playing for one whole bar. So we can extend this longer or shorter. We can change the pitch. That's F sharp. You can change the octave. Just going to zoom out vertically a little bit so we get a bit, a few more keys. Piano keys are on the left so you can see what you're doing. And if I just highlight this, press shift and up. I've now transposed it up an octave. And you can do shift and down twice if you like. Go down two octaves. So that really is all I want to cover in this very first basic lesson introduction to MIDI. It's data. It's saying when to start the note, when to stop the note, what pitch to play the note, what volume. So let's just put it onto velocity down here. So you could have this a lower volume, for example, right down here. We can have the volume right up. So this is velocity, and it's kind of like volume. It's how hard I've hit the keys. Because I drew this in manually, it's always going to be the same velocity, although you can change them. So for example, if I just duplicate those using Control D, I could have them coming up in volume if I wanted to. And so it's simply telling another device what to do. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next lesson. All the best, bye bye.